Welcome. Oh, we've got a couple viewers so excited. What's the weather like where you are? All right. Got some people joining us. Hi, Molly from Buffalo. Hello, everyone. Can someone put in the chat log that they can hear me? And I have a question for everybody. Um, has anybody ever visited a castle? That's what I'm curious about. Lots of people online today. Some familiar faces. Awesome. Again, has anybody ever visited a castle? I'm curious to know. And have you been inside? I've always wondered how many ca how many people can sleep in a castle. It's chilly there. It's Loveland Castle, wonderful. I have not been there. Hi, Sierra. Reese from Minnesota hasn't been to a castle yet. All right. Excellent, excellent. Some yeses from those. So many people were, a few more people we're gonna wait for. Wonderful. I went to a castle once or twice. It was big and old and smelled funny. Has anybody experienced that before? Oh, Cinderella's castle at Disney World. Nice. That would be fun. Maybe we can transport there. We'd have the park to ourselves, maybe. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started, I think. Uh, I've been asking some of um, some of you who's been to a castle. That was one of the questions that um, my friend Megan and I um, asked you before you joined us today. But today we're really going to talk about cybersecurity basics. And I know that's a big word. Um, but at the end of the day, cyber is computers and technology. Um, and then also security. We're going to talk a lot about safety and security and maybe a little bit of the differences between the two and why that's important. Because again, we're talking about cybersecurity basics, steps one, two, and three. And then at the end of our time together, um, we're going to reconnect and talk about maybe what you could do for steps four and five to finish out that badge. So super excited um, that you're here with me today. So again, safety and security, right? Cybersecurity, big word. Um, don't let it scare you. Um, but safety and security are something that are important to me every day um, because it's important to me to keep my friends and family safe. Um, do you know who else I like to keep safe? My dog. Her name is Sable. And... Uh, this is her collar. It's pink. She's not wearing it right now, right? But um, Sable's collar is to make sure that she stays safe and secure, right? It's got her name on it. Um, it's got a phone number. Can't see that. Um, but it's in order to keep her safe. Um, and then also it has, you know, again, when we talk about security, there's this other tag. That's her dog tag that says, we know that this dog is here so we can help return her. Um, and the collar that she wears also um, so when she goes on a walk, um, she's safe and that our other neighbors are safe too, right? So these are things that we do every day. So who can tell me maybe a little bit um, today? Today's Tuesday, right? What have you done today and a normal day um, to stay safe and secure? And I've got some ideas. Um, when I uh, finished cooking breakfast this morning, I had to make sure the oven was turned off. Is that something that's important to keep everybody safe? Right? Simple, right? Things we do every day. <coughs> what about um, 
yesterday, the weather was really nice, right? <clears throat> and the day before, not so nice today. Today, I had to shut my windows to make sure that maybe some of those sprinkles didn't come in. Those are the kinds of things that we do to make sure um, that people stay safe, right? What are some things that you do in order to stay safe? You can call those out. Maybe somebody's sitting beside you um, and you can share those ideas with them. Um, oh, someone says right now, one of the things we're doing to stay safe is we're staying home, right? Because we care about each other. It's not always easy, right? Um, but yeah, we're staying home in order to keep the whole community safe, right? Um, that's really, really a great, um, what about bicycles? I've got this little bike right here. Hold on. I got some props so I can show people some things, right? Got to keep this, these things interesting. Here's a little, here's a Lego bicycle. Can you see that? Pretty fancy. What about when you're riding your bicycle? What do you do to stay safe and secure? Those are two. Ooh, Amy Marie says wear sunblock. Absolutely. Yeah. I got little pink cheeks the other day. Um, but this little Lego bicycle, in order to stay safe, what do you wear in your head, right? Helmet. Maybe when your neighbor friend that's maybe a little bit younger than you was learning to ride their bike, maybe some knee pads and some elbow pads were a good idea. Um, also, when we're riding bicycles, we have to follow the rules, right? Stop at the stop signs, stay on the right-hand side, right? wheels go on the right. Um, Lindsay Shepard says, we lock the doors to make sure we stay safe. Absolutely, right? And sometimes staying safe and secure isn't just about keeping people out. It's also about keeping people in, right? We check our doors at night. Ooh, that's someone's job. Again, when we ride our bicycle, people have some great ideas here. Um, we wear our helmet. What do we do to keep our bikes secure? Hmm, that's a different question. If you were to go to the go to the ice cream shop, maybe you just leave your bike there. That's cool. But if it's a really busy ice cream shop, right? Once those open, um, maybe you lock up your bike in order to keep it safe. And then this bike has a little yellow light on the front of it. I don't know why. Um, but again, everything we do, there's usually rules in order to keep you safe. It's not to be mean or anything like that. And you walk your bike at a crosswalk. Absolutely. See, it's all those things that we do every day to keep safe and secure. And the same thing is equally as important when we're doing things on the computer. Now, is anybody on a computer right now? Or I don't know, maybe on a tablet or a phone, all of those things help us keep safe and secure, right? Those things are really, really important. So what about this? Let's ask some more questions to get our minds, get those wheels turning. Um, so what do you do in order to stay safe when you ride in a car, right? When you first rode in a car, I know you were in a car seat. I can say that for certain, right? And then you've got the fancy buckles, right? Um, also, some other things with cars. We also want to make sure that we have our turn signals, right? That's about that's a safety feature that's important. Or there's airbags, right? In case that you're in an accident, and we make sure that the lights go on um, when it's raining outside. Cars these days, it's really kind of cool. It was not like this when I was younger. Um, when you turn your windshield wipers on, oftentimes the car lights come on because that's a safety feature. That's really important. But when I was first driving a car, you had to turn your lights on, and that meant if you forgot to turn them off, bad news. What about, what do you do when you cross a street in order to stay safe? Hmm. Look both ways. These are things we learn when we're really, really young, right? It's the same thing with cybersecurity. The earlier and the younger you learn about how to stay safe when you're on a computer, the better off we're going to be, right? And when we cross our street, sometimes you look both ways. Sometimes you make sure you cross at a crosswalk. And sometimes, is there someone there to help you? There's someone there to help you. There's a, oftentimes a crossing guard, especially in front of schools, right? That's really important, right? What about rules? Say you were at recess at lunchtime. Are there rules to keep everybody safe? Like one person on the slide at a time, right? That's probably a rule. Or you can't go up the slide. That's so fun. Um, those things, we already talked about the kitchen once, right? All of those things are really, really important um, in order to keep people safe and secure, all right? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the fiber part of things. We're gonna do a little scavenger hunt. Well, really, I'm the only one doing the scavenger hunt, but I need your help, all right? So here we go. We're gonna do some definitions real quick. Safety, we've talked about it, right? Safety means to be free from danger or harm 
and you follow safety rules, all those examples we just gave each other, right? Safety rules to avoid danger and to keep from getting hurt or losing something. Yeah, that's kind of important too, right? Uh, oh, someone's grandmother is a crossing guard. That's so cool. Oh, awesome. Stay on the mulch on the playground. So for example, if we're talking about safety versus security, we'll go over the differences in a minute again. Um, for example, your bicycle helmet is a layer of protection, layer of safety, so you don't get hurt, right? That's safety. We talked about bikes once, a little red Lego bike, right? And then security, right? A little bit different, hard to read. That's cool though. Security gives us protection from harm or danger. So a little bit different, a little bit different. We'll learn a little bit more because they're both really important when it comes to cybersecurity, right? For example, again, we used this example once, the lock on our bike gives it security from getting lost, right? That's really important. And then technology, okay? Technology, that's what we're talking about today, how you stay safe when you're using technology. They're the inventions, ooh, that sounds fun, um, that come from science and research that solve problems and make our lives easier, right? Because that cell phone, make your life a little bit easier. Man, it makes my life easier. It's got a map in it. It's got my, I can call people. I can do things for work. Uh, I can go shopping. Oh, it makes life so easy, right? But I need to know how to use it safely. So computers, cell phones, and tablets are all examples of technology, right? That help us communicate with others. That's what we're doing right now. Having a conversation. It's a little one-sided, all right? And do tasks like homework. Hmm. Has anyone done their homework yet today? Or is this your homework? Does this count? Every school is a little bit different, right? So again, we're talking about safety, security, and technology, right? And I'll be honest, there's no wrong answers. I'm gonna go through this list, all right? So let's talk about some things. This old fashioned calculator, I use this every day. I probably used it like 10 times today. Do you think this is safety, security, or technology? Hmm. I'm gonna go with technology, even though it's not very fancy, right? It's important, it helps solve a problem. So you don't have to do the math in your head, right? Right, okay, so we got technology here, right? Cool. Back to the dog collar, young Sable, right? Security and safety both. What about the fence around your yard? What does that do? Kind of like the front door, right? Both safety and security. Hmm, I've got a flashlight here. Let's see, I think this keeps me safe when it's dark, right? What about this? I won't tell anybody, it's a secret. We're in a safe place. Does anybody sleep with a blanket or a stuffed animal or make sure that you have a certain light on because you feel safe at night that way, right? Those things, again, they help you, they protect you, right? They protect you, that's cool, it's good stuff. All right, let's see what else we have, ooh. Very timely, hand sanitizer, little bottle, It's probably pretty old, um, but it still works, right? Does this provide safety for me right now? It does, for sure, right? We usually have these even on a different day um, in my car. You just never know, right? My son usually has one in his backpack attached to it. Maybe somebody else has it too, but this provides a little bit of layer of safety. Kind of like we talked about that sunscreen, you put on a little bit, right? Cool. Let's see what else we have in here. Ooh, uh, ooh, world's tiniest drone. I don't think it flies, I think it only flew for a day. So drone, safety, technology, or security? Or do you think it's a trick question? Might be a trick question, right? So drones are definitely technology, right? For sure, for sure. But do you think they also, you know, if maybe the police use one, maybe they use that for security, right? Does that make sense? So again, not everything is black and white, right? When it comes to cybersecurity, it's about creating some rules and some layers of safety. Remember, we're gonna talk about those castles in a little bit. Let's see what else we have in here. Hmm. Pedometer goes on your wrist. Hasn't gotten much use, eh? Since it's a little dreary outside in my backyard. But is this safety, security, or technology? Hmm. I think my Fitbit, right? 
I think it's a little bit of technology, but it's really cool. And do you remember what it talks to? Again, it's solving a problem. The numbers turn up on my phone. That's what you're going to learn about in steps four and five on the cybersecurity basics badge. Is that cool? Let's see what else we have. Ooh, we've talked about that cell phone a little bit. You know what this thing is? I'll read it to you. All right. Water. 100% sealed and waterproof. It's a pocket for a cell phone so it doesn't get wet. So you're keeping the technology secure. Isn't that smart? I've never used it. I'm terrified. I don't even want to test it. Is that weird? Right? But again, it's something that makes life easier. Right? Right? Did anybody go kayaking this weekend? I had friends go kayaking this weekend. This would have been really helpful for them, right? It solves a problem. Okay. Cool. Let's see what else we got. Not a lot more. Hmm. A clock? I don't know. My son's learning how to read the time on these clocks. This time is not correct. It says it is 8.52. Hmm. It's 2.16 right now. I don't think it's 8.52, right? So... This, this was real technological at one point in time. Not so much anymore. Now, how do we wake up? We're, who, does someone have an alarm clock maybe in their bedroom? What about grandma or grandpa or your teacher? What do they use? Probably use a phone, don't they? It's like a phone's not a phone anymore. It's a computer, right? Again, that technology that's solving for something, right? All that stuff is really important. Ooh, let's see. That stuff. So this looks like a cell phone. It's not. If I press that button right there, it'll shock me. It's a joke. It's a practical joke. But this is a phone, right? A lot of people have these. Right? Both your calculator. Didn't we already see one of those? It's my GPS. It tells me where I'm going, right? It gives me directions. I don't need to better learn how to read some maps. All right. It also, again, tracks my steps with that pedometer, that Fitbit, right? Don't worry, I won't press the button. Um, it's not a hand sanitizer. No, it's not that, but it's a lot of gadgets in one, right? That's important stuff. All right, I'm not gonna press the button. I'm really tempted to, but I won't. Let's see, what else? Ooh, car keys. Well, I haven't driven anywhere today, um, but on these car keys, let's see. It's got a lock and unlock button from afar. That's nice, right? Really convenient has an alarm on it as well, right? That's for security, right? All these things that we use every day have safety and security right inside, right? So then when we think about these computers and cybersecurity, that big word's not so scary, right? We can use it all day, every day. Do you know what else I do? You're not going to tell anybody, right? Sometimes I leave the refrigerator open and our refrigerator has a little beep if you leave it open too long. It's really nice. I need help like that. Hmm. Let's see what else in this scavenger hunt. Oh, got something. This is a cash box. Safety, security, technology. Hmm. I'm going to go with security on this one. What do you folks think? It's got a combination. If only I knew what it was. I don't. All right. If I open it up inside, you know what's inside? You won't tell, will you? Valentine's from my son's Valentine's Day party. Don't tell. All right. That's what's inside, though. Right. Um, not a lot of money, but this is important. Right. It keeps things secure, whether you are a Girl Scout and maybe when you were selling cookies in your booths, maybe you had one in order to keep those monies secured. Right. That's cool. Or maybe if you, um, you know, get some money from the TV here, doesn't you? Again, these are things every day we use, right? Important stuff. Let's talk about some other vocabulary words, right? So we've talked a lot about technology, security, and safety. They're all together, right? But if we really want to dive in a little bit more and talk about um, cybersecurity, we've got to figure out some of those words again, like cyber, but again, not so scary. So a device, here's another one, here's a tablet, right? It's got a nice, good case on it for safety. Right? So it doesn't get banged up. Um, this one's pretty old. A lot of scratches. That's okay, though. Um, but these devices, right? Important. We use them all the time. Again, 
Has anybody done their schoolwork on a tablet yet today? Right? Maybe you're watching. So again, it's a piece of equipment um, that works like a computer, even though it doesn't look like computers used to. What about a password? If I were to go into this tablet, right, slide to unlock, that's that's a thing, right? It doesn't just pop open. It just doesn't turn on. I have to put in a password. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But the that's that number letter combination so that no one else can get inside, right? It's yours, right? Maybe you share it with your brother and sister. Maybe you share it with your mom, all right? But it helps protect the information here. You might be like, well, what kind of information is in here? Well, there's a lot of information in here. There's pictures of my family. That's important. You know, not everybody needs to see those. Um, also, I bet there's a username in here somewhere, right? It probably says someone's name in here. It's like, welcome, Lissa. Again, my name's Lissa. It's so nice to meet all of you. Um, and then also, when I go into this tablet, I access the internet. And oftentimes, I'm going to ask you this. So if you were to go on to um, maybe Kids Messenger, maybe that's something you use. Maybe you do Skype um, with your grandparents, right? Um, if that's a thing, then maybe you have a username, right? And you have a password. All of those things keep you safe and secure so that just not everybody can come in. That's kind of how this works. Um, again, again, that's the internet. And then do you ever go and maybe watch a YouTube Kids video and somehow YouTube Kids knows exactly what you want and what you like to watch, right? That's because of that username and password. Even though it's keeping you secure, it also contains more information so it gets to know you a little bit better. It's interesting, isn't it, right? But that's cool. So there's a lot, you know, going on in these tablets. But this is the thing. We talked about those passwords. It's about layers of security. So this is what I want you to do. Can you pull out that sheet, pull out a sheet of paper, maybe a marker, pen, whatever. Um, and let's talk about castles. That's how we opened this conversation, right? We were talking about castles and what they mean. Um, because castles have layers. And when we think about cybersecurity online, it has layers. All right, so let's talk about other things with layers. Mm, one thing I like with layers, cake. I like cake. Does anybody have a favorite kind of cake? Mm, what kind of cake do people like? Is it cake or cake with ice cream? It depends, right? I uh, really like lemon flavored things. I also like my mom's chocolate angel food cake. It has layers, right? What about if you go outside in the winter time, all right? Summer's around the corner, but if we're talking about going outside in the winter time, what do you do? You dress in layers, right? Does someone say, hey, you gotta put on an extra layer of socks or you know, make sure you put on a hat or a scarf? Right? If I hadn't put some of that stuff away, I'd be wrapping that up. You'd see me get all dressed in layers, but I'm not going to do that. But again, each of those layers provides an extra layer of safety and security. Right? We've got chocolate cake. Ooh, strawberry cake. Mmm, that sounds delicious. With ice cream. I think the vote is people like ice cream with their cake. Right? Exactly. What about, so we talked about layers with cake. What about even an ice cream sundae? Do you put layers on top of an ice cream sundae? Right? So you have the ice cream, right? And then maybe some nuts, then maybe some chocolate syrup, and then whipped cream, and the cherry on top. Each of those has a different layer. And that's what cybersecurity is about. It offers layers of support. All right. So again, think about those castles. That's your favorite castle, right? Or the castle you've been to. I heard Cinderella's castle, there's Sleeping Beauty's castle, and then there's a lot of other castles. Let's talk about why castles represent cybersecurity. I'm really going to go into this tablet now. We're going to see how this works. Oh, don't look at my password. It's secret. All right. What do you think is going to be on my screen? What have we been talking about? All right? Castles. All right? We'll get to this one. All right? I know it's kind of hard to see because of the lighting. But this castle is way up on top of a hill. Believe it or not, when castles were made way back in the day, it was about safety and security, right? So castles would be built way up on top of a hill. All right, we'll get a little bit closer. Do, do, do. Or this one, ooh, out in the water, so that people they can see people coming. There's only one way to get in on that bridge, and it's surrounded by water, so they see everyone coming, right? 
So not only are they beautiful, they're functional, right? For safety and security. This one has a lot of what's called turrets. Looks a lot like Cinderella's castle, right? Where it has the big peaks. Again, so you can see out really far. It's about those layers. We've got some other examples. Ooh, this one's just pretty. It's really lit up at night. All right. This one also out in the water. So again, it's about those layers of safety and security. What else are castles usually made out of? Hmm. Layers and layers of bricks, right? Layers and layers of bricks. You can really see it on this one right here. But and some of them are square and some of them have peaks. But those layers of security and those bricks, and you can draw a picture of the castle whenever you want. I've got some, I've got some other examples. Um, but those castles, again, have layers of security. And you might say, well, okay, let's say you keep talking about layers. You keep talking about security. You're talking about castles. But at the end of the day, what I want you to think about, and these are some hard questions maybe, um, what if, that internet didn't work so well one day. You didn't have it for a day. Has that ever happened to you? Oh, how would you do school? What are some other things that would be really hard if our technology, which is why we have those layers of support, those layers of security like a castle, if some of those went away, what would be hard? What would be harder? I wouldn't know where I'm going when I'm driving in my car. That would be terrifying, right? I don't know if I'd be able to play music that I like to dance to. I bet some of you like to dance to music, right? Or maybe um, if you're doing karate, you like to listen to music. Gets excited, right? Um, but yeah, what would what would happen if technology shut down for a couple of days because we didn't have the cybersecurity and the information technology? Does anybody know anyone that works in information technology? Mm, it's an important job these days. It's a good job. It's a science job, right? Science and math, right? So other things, what would happen? They couldn't, you couldn't use your cell phone, right? You couldn't use your computer. It'd be really, really hard. All those shows you like to watch, right? What else might not? Oh, you might not be able to do some of that schoolwork. So again, it's all about making sure, and this is what steps four and five are about, right? Um, it's about making sure that there's not just one there's not just a username, we have the username and a password, all right? And then I'm not gonna press it, I promise. But this little button down here, sometimes it's even your fingerprint. Or does any, has anybody seen um, a computer or a cell phone and all you have to do is look at it and it recognizes your face, right? That's technology in action. That's another layer of cybersecurity that's working and coming to life. Again, like those castles that maybe you're drawing a picture of right now, right? So did anybody learn, oh, someone's dad is in information technology? That's awesome. All right. Does anybody learn anything new today, maybe? I don't know. So let me show you, some, show you some pictures. I did this activity last fall with a group of girls. And here's a, here's a picture of a castle, rainbow-colored castle, right? Awesome. It's even got like a dragon over here swimming in the moat. Again, castles are a great example of why cybersecurity is so important. Because if you can't see from the turrets, at least you're out in the water, right? So you have one more line of defense. Um, maybe that drawbridge can come up or go down. Again, it's identifying all those layers so it's not just one thing. If it were to go wrong, then we lose everything. Here's another really nice one. Again, more dragons. We must have been talking about dragons that day. Right? Pretty cool, huh? So what are some, um, what are some other things that people learned today that maybe they didn't know before? Did you know the difference between security and safety? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. So again, when we come back and talk, um, when you have a chance to think about steps four and five, so believe it or not, all of that fun stuff. So we did the scavenger hunt. We talked about castles and layers of security, right? Um, and we learned some new vocabulary. That means you are done with steps one, two, and three of your um, Brownie Cybersecurity Basics badge. And next, steps four and five, what you can think about um, is how it, it is important and why it's so important 
um, to have safety rules when you go online and maybe what some of those safety rules should be, right? Whether it's when you're interacting with me, right? And we've never met before. Um, maybe it's that, making sure that there's someone else in the room. Maybe that's a good online rule. Maybe it's always asking permission, right? All those things that are important to keep you safe. So that's what step four is about. And then step number five is, I don't think that there's a wire that's connecting my computer to where you're watching, right? Somehow all of this information transfers and travels, right? So on step number five, you're gonna be able to discover a little bit more about how and why that works. And I saw some people here who say science is their favorite subject. It was mine too for a very, very long time um, until I started to work for the Girl Scouts. And now I just do it sometimes. Um, but I also know that there's some IT moms and dads out there or grandmas and grandpas. Um, so you'll look to them to provide you a little guidance and support about steps four and five. But hey, I had a really nice time with all of you today. And I appreciate everybody carving out a little bit of time. Um, and again, hopefully you didn't see my password. Otherwise, you'd be able to get into that tablet. And don't steal my Valentine's out of my cash box. I'd be super bummed out. Um, but I appreciate everybody spending about half an hour with me. And uh, everybody, make sure you stay safe. Make sure you stay secure. And uh, be well, my friends. Bye.